Hello and good evening, everybody, for this uh, masterclass Cognac and Armagnac, hosted uh, by Merg, but powered by Sinoco, of course, like so many other of the sessions we've, we've done in the past few months. Um, it's the first one after the summer, so um, I hope I'm not too rusty in moderating this, but uh, it'll, be, it'll be good, I think. Uh, most of you know the rules or how this works, so if you have questions, you can always ask them. If you don't want to ask them in person, you can put them in the chat session. I'll uh, keep an eye on the chat window and I'll pass on every question you have. Um, as you've noticed, we'll be doing this session in English because we've got people from all over Belgium joining in. So that's the best way to do it. If there's anything you don't understand in either of our languages, uh, just you can also ask. I'll try and translate. I, uh, I, I speak a little bit of, uh, of French, so uh, I can try and translate anything you, uh, any questions you have. Um, so, and the main idea for, of tonight is to have some fun and to learn a bit about uh, these two really nice brands we're going to have you taste, so Camus and Samalins. And to do that, we have, of course have um, invited some people who know far, far more about these drinks than I do. Uh, so this is a blessing that they're here. I'll introduce them to you um, now. Uh, so uh, for uh, the Armagnac side of the of the story, uh, we'll be jo we'll be joining us later on uh, in the session because we'll be starting with the four cognacs. Uh, Francois Sutre, um, he's replacing his colleague uh, who is uh, who is actually the the responsible for Belgium, but he's responsible for um, every other country basically. I think um, as uh, uh, an, uh, an, uh, the European sales manager for uh, for Samalens. Um, and he is, uh, I think, now in his office in a chateau, or are you at home? Uh, for the moment, I'm, I'm at home. You're at home, okay. But normally, yeah. every day, he spends his days yeah. in the chateau in Bordeaux, so I am very Thank jealous you. of his workplace uh, already. <laughs> so we'll be seeing you uh, later on, uh, Francois. Um, uh, you try and wait patiently before we start with the, with the, summer, with the three Samalens we're going to taste. And then we have a duo next to Francois in your, uh, in your uh, screen. Uh, we have uh, Manon Liedo, who is um, responsible, the export manager for the Belgian market and also for the UK and Ireland for, um, for Camus and all and other brands that they uh, are representing. Um, and next to her, we have uh, Frédéric Dusosier, who is the global brand ambassador for uh, Camus Cognac. And they'll be, uh, they'll be the two that, uh, that, that'll be starting our... Um, little trip into uh, into France uh, tonight. So welcome to you too, also. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just to, to start this off, um, I found a little quote uh, that joins Cognac and Armagnac, and I was wondering what you, two, what you all thought about this. Uh, it's from a book about uh, Armagnac, um, and the author states that um, if you compare the two drinks, uh, Cognac is more like the Beatles, and uh, Armagnac is more like the Rolling Stones. Um, I don't know if uh, if there's any uh, anything you would like to add to that, if you understand what he's saying, but I found that a, a really nice uh, quote, actually. What to tell? Yeah. <laughs> we are the Rolling Stone? No, no, the Armagnac is the Rolling Stone. So basically what he says is the cognac is more accessible, is smoother, is nicer, okay. is more mainstream, and okay. Armagnac is more rock and roll, basically. But they're both okay. geniuses, of course. It's a very nice comparison. It's, it's very nice. Thank you. Yes, it, it's good. And I look like McCartney uh, a little yes. bit. Yes, McCartney. <laughs> and then, Francois, you're more <laughs> a bit like Mick Jagger, I'm afraid. And, and really carry that. That. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Good, good comparison. Yes, very nice. I think on that note, uh, it's, we're ready to start tasting now. So, Francois, I'll uh, be uh, removing your spotlight for a moment until it's, uh, it's, it's your turn. Um, but we'll start with the cognacs. And I think uh, I'll let you, uh, you two start uh, by explaining, but I think we're going to start tasting straight away. Uh, and I thought the first one we're going to taste was the intensely aromatic uh, mm -hmm. that everybody has. So if you could put that into your glass, have a taste. You can add your tasting notes in the Mentimeter. And now I'll stop talking and give the words to Manon and Frédéric. It seems that you drank already, no? Because your bottle is, is nearly empty. I had to share it with everybody in the session, uh, Frédéric. So. <laughs> okay. Sure. So maybe we're going to... Uh, I will uh, share my screen and I will briefly introduce uh, Camille Cognac. 
and uh, we're gonna taste in the same time. Uh, here we go, so let me share. So everybody can see my screen? Mm. Yeah, that should work. So uh, Camus Cognac House is one of the largest cognac house around the world, but actually it's the last which is still family owned. So today it's the fifth generation with uh, Cyril Camus. So we are completely independent uh, with a project uh, focus. We definitely want a high quality, a quality. And so we are, it's a passion about uh, five generation, uh, a passion about taste, a passion about terroir, and we are a wine growers. So we have our own vineyards uh, in Cognac. So briefly, so Cognac is the it's a small city located in Charente. Uh, so it's an appellation, uh, and we have six crus uh, in Cognac. So then you're gonna taste the Borderies Cognac VSOP. So Borderies is one uh, of the six crus, and Borderies we can say is the sign signature sign of uh, Camus Cognac. But I will explain you later why. Um, so briefly to do cognac, so we need uh, aromatic grapes. So we have uh, mostly Niblon, so 98%, then Fol Blanche and Colombard in a smaller percentage. Uh, then to be called cognac, we have to age the eau de vie during two years minimum. And then we have different categories. So VS, which is a two years minimum, the SOP, which is uh, four years minimum, and XO. So tonight we're gonna taste two different the SOP, so minimum four years. So we're gonna test first a blend of different terroirs, and then we're gonna test a 100% uh, cognac from Borderie terroir. Um, so for us, a good cognac, it's uh, three points. So it's uh, intense floral notes intense aromas of fruits and a well-balanced woody notes. So we're gonna first uh, speak about the aromas of flowers. So actually, so I said, we have like six cru in cognac um, and I will speak about borderies because borderies, so it's the smallest cru in the appellation but we are the biggest owner of this, uh, of this terroir. And Bordery, what is it? So Bordery is this. Mm -hmm. So actually it's a flint. So obviously this, when you, when you do that, you're gonna smell and you have this um, gunpowder. So this is gonna bring a lot of minerality to, your, to the cognac, but it's gonna bring also a lot of aromas of, flower, of flowers, which is called terpenol. So this is why uh, for the 100% bordery, you're going to see when you're going to taste it after, it's really intense in uh, aromas of uh, flowers. And in the blend, so the first one, uh, so it's also floral because it's a blend with uh, a, high, a higher percentage of bordery inside. Um, so maybe is, maybe I should uh, I should uh, say uh, of course everybody here yes. tasting with us uh, are professionals so they know this but um, you should probably when you're tasting leave a little bit in your glass for later on so you can compare the next uh, drinks to to this Definitely. too so uh, just little reminder because I always seem to forget that myself too. Yeah, that can be a good point actually. So just to recap, so minerality because of things to the flint and aromas, florals, aromas, thanks to the flint again. Up. So then the rich fruity aromas. So this is come from the distillation. So uh, for cognac, we do a double distillation actually. So ester, fruity aromas, so pastry, pear, strawberries, this kind of aromas are called ester. So, um, and to the simple, so the, the intensely aromatic range, so the blue range you're testing right now, it's, a, it's a very, very aromatic. Why? So 
as I said, we, uh, we increased the percentage from the borderies, so we increased the quantity of flowers aromas in the plant. Then we do a distillation with lees. So when a distillation is made with lees, the, we're going to have much more ester, much more aromas of fruits inside the cognac uh, compared to a distillation with, uh, with a wine, we have no lees. So you can see on the screen. Don't hesitate to ask me a question if, you, if it's not really clear, but I will show you a video, quick video then we sum up everything. And so, yes, so I'll say. And the third point, um, we should explain why our cognac are very aromatic. It's because, so when you do a cognac, so, well, sorry, when we do a cognac, so you have the head, you have the herd, and you have the chill. And most of the time, the cognac house keeps only the, the herd to do cognac. Because uh, in, the, at, in the beginning and at the end of the distillation, you have aromas, but you have also a sediment, which is not really good uh, to, to do a cognac, actually. So most of the cognac house keep only the herbs. But what we do at Camus Cognac, and we have a patent for that, it's a patent which is called Instantly, it's we, actually we're gonna take the first 20 liters, we take them and we separate them individually, and we're gonna analyze each liters and each liters in which we have a lot of aromas, we're gonna keep it and, and put it at, in, the, in the juice, in the eau de vie cognac. In the heart. In the heart, exactly. I don't know if it's clear. So three points, why our cognac are very aromatic? Because we do distillation with lees, we have increased the percentage of borgeries in our blend, and we have a patent for the distillation. Actually, we do a selection of aromas uh, during the distillation process. So. And of course, for the aging. So as we add lots of aromas, of flowers aromas, of fruits aromas, uh, we don't want to give too, many, too much aromas of wood, so actually we use um, a very light toast and a very fine grain. So this is the, the point. It's if you want absolutely, to to absolutely uh, right. Your presentation is, <laughs> is perfect. And I will just show you like a very quick video which is gonna resume what I've just said because maybe it's simpler to understand like that. And it's really quick. I think, um, Manon, we don't have sound. Okay, but it's just a, actually just a song. So it's a, just it's just the image. There's no comment. So it's a double distillation. This one and the second one. And this is a selection of the aromas. So the first 20 liters are selected, and the most aromatic ones are added to the final juice. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, a question from me already. So yeah. the, the, the cask you use are all locally sourced French oak or? Yes, it is. Yes, from the Limousin part. Limousin, yeah. 
And uh, because we work with a coverage factory, uh, which is also family company since five generations. So we have a collaboration with this company and they purchase the tree in limousine. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, I see we have, um, we have quite a few, uh, about seven people have already added some tasting notes to the, to the Mentimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give them a, just a little bit more to add uh, if, if anybody wants to add. But in the chat, we have a, a nice tasting note by uh, our resident tasting note writer, uh, Marek Dermul already. Uh, so I'll just read it. Uh, a lot of floral and fruity notes on the nose supplemented with the spiciness of the oak. Very fruity on the palate with little, if any, tannins, perfectly balanced with notes of tropical fruit and vanilla, and a lovely finish, a bit warming and spicy. The reason, one of the reasons is the capacity of the pot steel. Okay. Uh, we work only with small pot steel. So if you want the, the, the ratio uh, uh, between the volume of wine and low wine and the uh, surface of copper and the temperature of heating is absolutely perfect with 2,500 liters. That's why we work exclusively with this size. And actually we are the company who work with the smallest pot steel. Okay. Yes, since, and we do that since, uh, since the beginning. Okay. Yes, yes. It's good to uh, know, it's good to know. Yes, yes. I, I would like to add something. Uh, I was seller master, so when I tell something, I would like to hear, yes, master. Yes, master. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try I'll try and remember. <laughs> no, <laughs> <I'm joking>. but, <laughs> no, no, that's, uh, but what I'm just uh, telling you, it's, it's absolutely right. The influence of the, the, the pot steel is very, very important. The influence of the capacity of oak cask also. Yep. We work with a small oak cask because same thing, the ratio between the surface of wood, the volume of liquid and the hygrometry and the temperature of the cellar, it's perfect for us again. Yep. So how, how, how big are the casks then that you use? Are they like 350. 180? 350. 350. Okay. 350. And, uh, you know, we don't want to make a juice of wood. This is not our job. Mm -hmm. we, want to give the priority to the natural flavor from the wine. Why to lose this with the wood? So that's why our wood is only like was telling you, uh, Manon, fine grain, medium progressive toast, and a very short time in new oak cask. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the and result of that, the result of that is a quite a, quite a, a complex uh, uh, cognac uh, because I see a lot of tasting notes. I'll share them with you, and then mm. you can go into the, the the your tasting notes or what uh, what you thought uh, uh, it should have. So, Manon, if you could stop your sharing, I, mean, I, I can sh yeah. start my sharing, and then it's, it'll yeah. stop your mm. yeah. This, this, this. Uh, so these are the results of the Belgian jury for this one. So you can see how it works. Um, the more a word is mentioned, the bigger you'll uh, you'll see it on the screen. So vanilla is the biggest one. Most mm -hmm. people, a lot of people have said vanilla, um, and there's a lot of a lot of smaller ones too. Yeah. Alors, if I can add some uh, something that uh, the VSOP, this VSOP, it's a blend of five different areas: the Grand Champagne, Petit Champagne, Fin Bois, Bon Bois, then Bordery. So five different cognac are in this blend. So that's why you can get a different aroma from the different area. For example, you will get some uh, uh, sandalwood from the Grand Champagne, but you will get some fruity nuts from the Fin Bois, etc., mm. etc. That's the result of the blend. And the final signature is from Bordery, of course, like was I mean, uh, Manon. So yep. the comments are, uh, are right. And the vanilla is more coming from the... Uh, a little bit for the, from the aging because you know our VSOP is at least four years old because it's a VSOP, but it can go to 15 years old as well as is a blend. Okay, nice. Yeah, I can also see a lot of words that refer to fruit in some way, but uh, yes. they're mentioned in different ways. So we got fruity, red fruit, mm -hmm. tropical fruits, fruity mm -hmm. notes, uh, uh, peach, pear. So mm -hmm. lots of fruitiness in there, I think, uh, in different kinds of, uh, of uh, aromas. Yes. Alors, we have a technique of testing with our cognac, a specific testing, because our cognac are very aromatic and we, want, we work on it. 
when we 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 put the for the the, the nose we open also slowly the mouth and depending on the size you open your mouth you will be able to identify x or x aroma to do that you open your mouth and depending you open you can increase or decrease the aroma you get by the nose and it's typically it's worked very well with our cognac uh, because probably you know but we have only half of the nose working mm -hmm. It's not only for cognac, eh? the half of the nose work for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also interesting, maybe in the chat, um, Geert, who is a cocktail expert, um, is responding to a question from Mark about cocktails. And he says, yeah, this would work very well in a sidecar cocktail uh, mm -hmm. or a Sazerac. Uh, and he would uh, even replace some recipes. Uh, he, would, he, would, he would replace the bourbon for this cognac uh, in some cocktail recipes. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, side cards, it's, it's, a, it's a cocktail that we do a lot with this range. Actually, the, the blue range, so it's the, the instantly aromatic, is really used by the bartender and mixologues uh, all over the world because it's really intense in aromas. So definitely, and side cards is one of the most uh, um, reproduced cognac uh, cocktail with our cognac. So definitely, it's a... Good uh, suggestion because it's uh, exactly the, the perfect cocktail for with this. Uh, with this is an excellent booster. It's a really excellent booster. It's a good booster. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good booster. And you know, I know another example. Uh, myself, I make the morito with the with cognac. Morito okay. with this vinsoupe is absolutely marvelous. Okay, so everybody, write this down. And tomorrow you'll all be starting to work on mojitos with this cognac. So yeah, and otherwise you just can like take like a tonic, like a ginger, 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 ginger tonic uh -huh. with uh, with some uh, VSOP canner, just perfect and really easy mm -hmm. to do, really yeah. fresh. So yeah. All right, shall we uh, move on to the next cognac or yes, what is? Sure. Uh, I'll uh, um, stop sharing my screen here, so you can take over again. So if you want to, we can move and compare with the VSOP from Borgeries, 100% Borgeries. So, and don't hesitate to keep your first glass like this. You can compare the two because it's exactly the same age. It's just different terroir. And probably you don't know, but the Borgeries is the origin of the cognac. Okay. It's 500 years ago, you imagine the area of cognac, there was no grapes exclusively, there was grapes in the border area. And, and they were already grapes, distilling at that time? Uh, no, what happened then, the, the, the wine who was producing was sent to uh, England. But unfortunately, when it arrived to England, it was uh, affected like a vinegar. And even if it was for English people, we have to do something. And uh, so we, we decided to, to distill that called burn wine. Burn wine, you know, in German language is a brand wine, so it's given the name brandy. That's the origin. Uh, and from this time, so 500 years ago, uh, the other people came, some Iran people, Italian people came and grew grapes around Bordery and it's it was the beginning of the, the cognac story. But the beginning of the beginning is the bordery. When you drink a glass of bordery, you drink the origin of the cognac. It's absolutely true. Okay. So, <laughs> it's already very different than the, than the yeah. first one. It's very different. You know, we are not allowed to, oh, waiting. Yes. to tell something. I will show you. Yeah, people are now putting their tasting notes in here. So I don't know. Uh... I will put the tasting notes of the first one. Mm -hmm. So I can I can see this is a um, small batch. Uh, maybe you could uh, tell a little bit more about this. Yes, it's more blush because, as you know, the bordery is only 5% of the total area. And the total area is 81,943 hectares. 
and it's only 5%. So, of course, it's limited in terms of production. So, for this bottle, for example, I think it's only it's something like 15 or 16 bottles, 16,000 bottles produced for the year. So, it's limited production, not in limited edition, but limited mm -hmm. production. Yes. Actually, 5% uh, is 250 hectares, and Camus owns 190 hectares. So this is why we are the biggest uh, owner of this boundary. So this is why boundary is, is definitely the signature of uh, Camus Cognac. So, yes. Okay. And um, since it's small batch, uh, would there be differences differences between each vintage uh, each year? Or is, is it always basically the same profile that you're aiming for with boundary? No. That's not the same. Why? Because the, our uh, vineyard is divided in the six different plots. And depending the year, we blend this plot more or this plot less. It depends uh, on the, the quality we want to do. But the main thing, and you know how it's difficult for the seller master, is to be able to produce the, exactly the same cognac every year. Wow. So even if it is a bad year, but there is no, I, we cannot tell that there is a bad year in cognac area. Or there is nothing because it's destroyed by the, by the frost or not, or the wine are correct, but the production is less. But it's not like in a wine, you have a wrong wine, difficult wine, it doesn't happen in cognac. Okay, and is there such a thing as uh, vintages in cognac? Yes, of course, yep. we have vintages. Uh, it's very difficult to produce vintage in cognac because cognac is having the, the, the rules and the law, the more strict in the world of the spirit. Well, you have to prove from the, the pressing to the bottling, you have to prove by the bailiff and the government that it's true. So from the press to the bottling is under seal works. Okay. Uh, and it's very difficult to make a vintage, but it's a guarantee for the government, for the consumer. It's a guarantee. I know that it doesn't happen for the other spirit, but for the cognac, we are, we are very proud to tell that when you purchase a vintage from cognac, you have the guarantee uh, by the belief. A certificate okay. is there. That's very important. Yeah, I can see people are uh, putting lots of tasting notes in there. It's more spread out this time. There's more more different tasting notes being uh, being put into the into the um, Mentimeter into the word cloud. So that's that's interesting in itself, I think. Yeah. Should we go to the then have a look at the word cloud how it looks now? Yeah. yeah. People are still adding to it, so you can you can you can just uh, stay adding uh, to it. You can see in the middle there the biggest <laughs> words are again pepper, orange, floral, vanilla. See lots of fruits again, apples, pears, apricots, more apple, grape, yeah. And in the chat, uh, people are making cocktails again. Uh, so they're making uh, mint vieux julep is, is a suggestion. Uh, mm. Vieux carré is a suggestion. Uh, so, yeah, people are getting inspired by this, mm. which is always fun to see. <laughs> now everybody is is in the mood for vieux carré. <laughs> So is this is this what you would expect for tasting notes, uh, Manon and Frederic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this a... ah. mm. So it's much more. Yeah, is the, this one is much more flower and floral and more a little bit more fine. Uh, it's a cognac which is really very elegant. I don't know what people thought about it, but it has two different two different um, profiles. So uh, maybe it could be interesting then to, to ask which one the, the people preferred. 
um, mm -hmm. because the two, two, it's just two, two different uh, mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all the way at the end of the of the tasting, will uh, you'll have everybody will have the opportunity to give a score on ten uh, for each drink they had, and we'll see what uh, what the, the the average will uh, will will uh, work out then. Um, but if people want to vote already for uh, what their favorite is between the first one and the second one, uh, put it in the chat. I think uh, might be might be fun to see. Yep. But I think. Uh, while people are thinking about that, Marcus, uh, number, number two. two. Number two. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are people that like complexity, I think, mm. all of them. Right. Okay, nice. I think I'll stop sharing the word cloud. Uh, just uh, for your interest, for everybody, um, I'll make PDFs of all the word clouds and send them to you afterwards in your mail so you can uh, keep them in your, in your collection forever if you want. Um, this is just a, a way of, of getting people to talk, I think. To Ildore Cognac. So yes, we can, we can produce Cognac on the Ildore uh, Island. So definitely, the terroir is called the uh, Bon Terroir, Bois Terroir. So yes, I'm gonna. So maybe you're gonna taste first. Yeah. So it's. Um, I cannot. Yeah, no, but, no, but actually, I cannot say anything because no. uh, if I say it, I cannot write it. Hello. What what we can tell only. Well, it's, really? not a, it's not a comment, but you imagine yes. you are yes. on the island in Eure, just before the harvest. You walk in a vineyard and you pick some uh, berries. They will, you would be uh, surprised by the test. I don't tell you the test, but there is some nuts characteristic in this island, on this island. Yeah, maybe just you. It's a small, it's a teasing, yeah? Yeah, it's a more, yeah, it's an island, so. Yes, it's an island. What? Maybe, maybe we should. Can you, can you find? Uh, yes, maybe, uh, maybe someone said it. Maybe we should uh, start with the beginning, because um, maybe this is a stupid question, but where is Ildere? So Ildere is a very small island uh, near in Charente, actually. So it's the center of France, but it's a small island in the Atlantic Ocean. So mm -hmm. actually the Atlantic Ocean is gonna have a huge impact. Uh, and actually as uh, Frédéric said, when you're gonna test the, the grapes before the harvest, because of the wind and because of the impact of the Atlantic Ocean, this, you have this saltiness, which is uh, on the skin of the grapes. So this is why when you're gonna test this cognac, you definitely have some uh, saltiness, okay. some uh, iodic aromas, mm -hmm. so which is quite fun. It's when you do blind tasting. Uh, sometimes when I do whiskey tasting, I put um, the cognac Ildere uh, among it, and people are quite lost because they don't have the aromas of whiskey, but they don't have the aromas of the cognac, so they're quite lost. For a blind testing, sometimes you can imagine it's a, it's a whiskey, mm -hmm. but it's not. So it's just a cognac with saltiness. So it's a very, so it's, um, a, this cognac has a distinctive uh, palette of aromas, a uh, lot of minerality, very fresh, uh, and um, other aromas that you're going to try to, to find, and of mm -hmm. course, saltiness. So, and it's a kind of whiskey, oh, sorry, it's a kind of cognac, sorry, <laughs> that we're mm -hmm. going to love to pair with oyster. So sometimes we just add a drop in some fresh oyster, which is quite good. Um, if you, but we have a lot of uh, French um, uh, cooker, uh, cooker. Yes, the chef, some yes, chef, chef, some chef, chef they use, they use. that we use it for like, mm -hmm. um, to, in a dish with a lot of fishes, with some seafood, uh, you can drink very fresh. You can put it on ice directly. You can pour the um, this cognac on ice. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's a very interesting uh, uh, cognac. 
uh, that you can use like more or less everywhere in a cocktail by itself with glass on ice. Uh, in the food with oyster, especially with oyster. If you like oyster, just please put a drop of this cognac in fresh oyster. It is just so beautiful. Which sushi sounds good. Also, so with sushi. Yes, as well. With sushi in Japan, I made experience with sushi, but another also is if you have a good bacon. Good bacon, a very uh, uh, bacon with very smoky bacon. You grist it, uh, you you grips and at the time you verse in your glass, you have your bacon like this, and you fill on the bacon. So the cognac will take the bacon uh, power, and when you will put your nose and you will drink, oh, that's okay. It. So pour it over bacon. Wow, yes, yeah. is superb. You know this cognac is made from A to Z on island. That's the only we are the only company to produce cognac on the island of the Ré, which is the part of the cognac area. So it's uh, harvested, winemaking, distillation, aging on the... Uh, and for your information, by analysis, by chromatography is very serious, huh? is 10 times more IOD than on the mainland. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It is, it is true, it's a characteristic. You cannot compare this cognac to another cognac. That's another, another yeah. view. Another. The, 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 the comments in the, in the chat are going that direction too, like niche cognac. It's a bit niche. It's a bit, someone says it's a bit disturbing, Troublant, uh, because it's just so different from, uh, from what you're used to. If, you, if you're thinking about cognac, yeah, like you said, yeah. Manon, uh, you, can, you can easily put this next to a whiskey and you can, can uh, get people uh, off their minds uh, uh, what, they're, what they're thinking. So yeah. Yeah. It, is, it is very... Um, very special, yeah. Very different yeah. from uh, the others. Uh, very fresh. And it's a new packaging. I saw the question. So definitely yes. it's a new packaging. Ah, yes. And we've that. changed that. And we wanted to put the French, uh, because uh, the, the, so this is why we have the French flag on it. We wanted to, we wanted that people understand directly what is Ile de Ré. Uh, so this is why we put, uh, so picture of Ile de Ré, um, the cognac, so it's definitely an invitation to the to a trip to Ile de Ré with this bottle. So I don't know if a lot of if some people uh, here went to to Ile de Ré before, but yes, if you went there, you definitely recognize the Ile de Ré on the on the label. Mark so. Mark went there because he says in the chat that he had a cycling holiday there, so he had a nice some nice memories. So yeah, uh, and this is the only cognac. When you put to your ear, you can hear the waves of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that now because I have my, um, my headphones on, but I'll do that afterwards. I still have the bottle left, so I'll... Uh, you will tell us, please. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's just share the, the tasting notes again uh, for a second uh, to see what people are making of this. Uh, very interesting again. Um, so there you go. Salt is the big blue word in the middle there. Um, and it's not only because you said it, I think. It's just, it's very clear that it's in there. Uh, and there's all kinds of variations on that too. There's iodine, there's saltiness, salted caramel, I see. So you can group those together. There's mineral, minerals, uh, stuff like that. So Salted yeah. caramel, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. And great for seafood. So. Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, we have some uh, we have some food pairing to do after uh, afterwards with uh, with these cognacs. Uh, might be yes. might be a good idea. All right, um, Manon, Frederic, we have gone through our four cognacs that we were going to taste together with you. Um, maybe we'll give uh, everybody like five minutes if they want to ask questions about the cognacs now. I think afterwards you can still ask questions about anything, uh, but uh, if there's anything you want to know right now, uh, go ahead. And otherwise, we'll go. We'll move on to the the three Armagnacs we're going to taste. That's cool. Uh, bonsoir. I have a question. Um, uh, I ask this to any distiller because I I get all sorts of answers. What do you do with your heads and tails of your dist distillation? Uh, alors, if, if I understood well, because the, the sound was very low, you ask us what we do with the heads and the tail. 
That's correct, Marcel. I'm right? Bon, OK. Head are excellent. The problem of the head is the, the strength of alcohol. So it's very strong. But 15 years ago, after, after uh, stewed by the, the research and development, we said it's stupid because uh, the strength is decreasing. So there is something happen. So that's why we decided to analyze each liter of the head. And surprise, the liter was different and the aroma was there. For example, I give you only one example. The liter number four is at 95% having the aroma of the banana. That's called, the molecule is called the uh, acetate amyomyl. It's the molecule of the banana. Well, that's number four. Why to lose this aroma? So we keep, we select. Number nine, etc., etc. So after 20 liters, we can select eight or nine liters at each, for each distillation, and we include immediately in the heart. So that means, that means that the head are very useful. So the remaining, what we do, don't imagine that we put at the trash, we redistill again. We put in a wine or we put in the tail because the tail are the last part of the distillation, huh? head, heart, and tail. And the tail are too low, too low to, to produce cognac. It's heavy, there is a marvelous aroma, but it's not stable. So we need also to redistill it. So we reuse always the product of our distillation. We, nothing is going to the trash. Because unfortunately I heard from, uh, there was a, a, a big uh, uh, listen, uh, lecture at the university in Cognac and the people who was in charge of the whiskey told, oh, this guy from, uh, uh, from uh, Cognac, they put at the trash the head because it's dangerous for the head, for the, for the, for the head. It's absolutely wrong. There is no one drop of methanol inside. So that's why we reuse. Unfortunately, it's too high in, uh, in percentage of alcohol. Is it uh, the, uh, okay for the for answer? You... Okay. Thank you. Merci. Another question is, uh, vous redistiller les coupes combien de fois? Donc, uh, in English, how many times can you redistill the cuts? Alors, the cuts means uh, the end, the tail. I think, I think that's what, uh, what is meant, yeah. I would tell there is no limit. There is two distillation to obtain the heart, but the tail, of course, uh, per definition, it will be always redistilled. Yeah. But it is, it is blend with a product which is not distilled. So, but yes, it can be, I don't know, but on six months of distillation, you imagine how it can be redistilled. So when we tell is double distillation is true, there is two time distillation, but the, the bypass product are really still yes that's, uh, that's and then we have a maybe a final thing uh, it's it's an uh, uh, a creative solution to your uh, to your port cask problem uh, can you call it eau de raisin by camus in uh, a finish no no, <laughs> no. that would, would, we would be would be weird i think but uh, no unfortunately it's not uh, maybe in armagnac they can do that's a, a good a good bridge you made there, uh, Frederic. <laughs> so we can we can we can make the the little uh, transition to the to the Armagnacs. Thank you both already for the for the presentation. We'll go back to you all the way at the end, maybe for some more questions. Okay. Uh, but thanks already. Um, for everybody, I will be in view uh, by myself for a few seconds. Please don't uh, run away now, while I uh, look for Francois and put him into view. There he is. Hi, Francois. And I'll also uh, change my background now because I had the uh, Chateau de Camus in my background, but I will change that to the casks of Samalens, which is more appropriate for uh, what we're going to do now. That's perfect. So I think the first one we're going to taste uh, that you're offering us is the Napoleon. Yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll ask everybody to just put that in their glasses, start tasting. The Mentimeter is ready and then I'll give the, the podium to you because you have been waiting for an hour already to talk. Thank you very much. So I'll try to do my best after this very, very nice presentation from Camus. 
so yeah, I will just uh, make uh, you know put the house in context. So uh, I will share the presentation and uh, that was not a good idea. Uh, okay. Great. Um, yeah, there we are. Yeah. So the house Tabernacles uh, was founded in 1882. So it's a very, very old house. Uh, it was founded by the Tabernacles family. So um, the Tabernacles family was uh, in the house during uh, a very, very long period because uh, it was from 1882 uh, until 2014, approximately. So almost the entire life uh, of the company. Um, so during this period, uh, you had uh, different shareholders uh, like the Hani family. Uh, but basically uh, the last one, Pierre Samanas, uh, was uh, the, the last representant of uh, the, the, the Samanas family. And, and uh, so for us, it was an honor to, to, for, to, to, to work in this house uh, with this heritage. So, so the house, uh, to put it in a little bit more in context, uh, is a part of a larger group. So um, the current owner is Mr. Jean Merlot, uh, which is an owner of different chateaus uh, in Bordeaux, including uh, the Chateau de la Rose. And uh, Mr. Merlot uh, founded uh, with uh, the general manager of, uh, of Creola Rose, Mr. Nicolas Sinoquet, uh, in 2013, uh, an artisan spirit group called Mandracor. Uh, so we have approximately uh, eight brands, including Armagnacs. We have three Armagnacs, three Armagnacs, sorry. We have Cognacs, we have gin, we have uh, vodka, uh, and, uh, and some liquor. Uh, and a whiskey, and a lot of different products. Uh, and Samanas, uh, it's a very, very important piece uh, of this puzzle because um, Samanas is, uh, has a very, very strong uh, know-how uh, and uh, very good material, the, the, the distillation, uh, uh, distillation processes, uh, the, the uh, distillery, uh, which is very big and great for the region. Uh, and in the group, it's uh, the house which um, combinates uh, the tradition because we use this heritage uh, to, we try to continue uh, to work with this heritage, um, working on new experiences uh, you, on the Armagnac, so using the product. So to focus on Samanas now, so in Samanas we work uh, only on the Bar Maniac Terroir. So the Bar Maniac, so uh, just uh, as a reminder, uh, you have uh, three areas in Armagnac. You have the Bar Armagnac, so where you have the, the, the most of the production. Uh, you have the Armagnac Tenares, which is the largest one, uh, but not with the uh, the, um, the 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 uh, not with a lot of vineyards, so it's not the, the biggest one. And you have the O Armagnac uh, when you have maybe one or two vineyards, so it's very very confidential. Um, which is interesting with the Bar Armagnac, it's that you have um, a very a soil very typical with very very uh, thin particles. Uh, called sable fauve, uh, and it it gives uh, a lot of fruitiness and it makes uh, more smooth eau de vie when you compare with Armagnac Tenares, uh, where you have uh, some clay and you have more strong and concentrated uh, eau de vie. 
Um, to focus more now on our technical path. Um, so the particularity of our distillery is to have two types of pot steels. We have the Charente steels. So you had a very good explanation uh, before. Uh, and you also have the Armagnac steel. So I will explain a little bit more later, uh, the column with the plates. And we combine these two distillation methods uh, to give more richness and more complexity to the Armagnac uh, and have more, you know, we can make more things and we have more latitudes. Um, for the aging, we use uh, 40, um, 450 liters barrels. Uh, so it's oak from Gascony, but not only, uh, it's only for particular batches. Uh, and we make a rotation between new and old barrels. So to adapt uh, the aging. And we move the barrels into different cellars because we have different atmosphere. So we have hot and dry cellars and we have more fresh and humid cellars. Uh, and of course, uh, between these two extremes, you have uh, quite dry or quite humid cellars. And we can move uh, to, according to the, the, um, uh, the tasting. Uh, we can adapt the atmosphere to age our armaments. So now to explain you more the distillation, I have a very, very simple uh, uh, schema. Uh, so you can see here, you have uh, the difference between the double distillation and this one is here, you don't have uh, a quantity of wine. So it's a continuous flood of wine from here and this continuous flood of wine, so pass through this um, uh, the, the serpentine to, to fresh the, the vapors, and you have this continuous flood of wine on the plates. So these plates has holes, and so the wine go down by the holes and stay on the plates before go down and they are heated on the bottom of the pot still and the vapors go up by the same holes and then in the serpentine to be, to be refreshed. And then you have here uh, the Armagnac uh, at approximately 55 or 60% of alcohol. It depends on uh, at which level you take it here. Which is interesting with this method is uh, you have a contact between the vapors of alcohol and the wine. And this contact concentrates and you keep a lot of esters. So you have the, the explanation before, <coughs> the fruitiness and the powerful of the aromas. And that's why to make a, uh, maybe a short comparison with, with the cognac, with the Armagnac, you have more concentration and most, it's more strength uh, in the mouth. And it's because of this distillation method. And yeah, after it's uh, the data for the, the Samanos Napoleon. So for this one, we use 95% 95, 95 of traditional distillation and only 5% of the double. Uh, so we combine it because with the double distillation, we have more smooth uh, eau de vie. So uh, it takes more complexity in the Armagnac and that's why we don't use a lot, but sometimes when you have very concentrated uh, Armagnac, it's always interesting to adjust the blend with a little bit of smooth eau de vie uh, to give the complexity and to give, some, uh, to give some complexity overall to the finish. Uh, we use uni blanc and folle blanche. So here in Samanos, we don't harvest, but we we we, we buy some wines, uh, and we are we are we be, we are very careful to uh, the producers and where the wines are produced, and that's why we yeah we barely uh, work with approximately 
three or, or four producers because we really want to have a, a continuous quality. Uh, and again, uh, we age it uh, for the, in 450 liters French oak barrel. So this one, it's not black Gascony. I will explain uh, after why. Uh, but for this one, basic, basically, uh, we have big grain in the first years uh, to have strong uh, woody notes. And after we make rotation with old barrels and we move the barrels from the top to the down. Uh, why? Because in the dry and hot cellars, uh, you have more evaporations. So during the first years, uh, you have more contact with the wood and more con concentration. After, after between three and five years, so we put the barrels to put the barrels in the cellar more fresh and humid. And we make that during two and three, yeah, approximately years to stabilize the eau de vie. And after we finish all the aging in a fresh and humid cellar uh, to stabilize it and finish the work of the wood uh, to have the roundness and the complexity without uh, have, uh, as Frederick said, a, a juicy uh, a wood, a, a juicy wood. So, yeah, that's so basically for this one. So, how long has this aged on uh, on barrels, uh, Francois? So this one is uh, seven years seven minimum years. in the blend. Uh, of course, you have uh, older wood inside, but the youngest is seven. Okay. And why is it called Napoleon? It's a very good question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Napoleon. <laughs> uh, Napoleon is between the, 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 the VSOP and the XO. Uh, but honestly, I, I don't know how exactly uh, it's called Napoleon. OK. All right. Uh, we have a nice tasting note in the chat already. There are some tasting notes in uh, in the Mentimeter, so if, if you if you don't mind, I'll share that, and then we can go into that uh, territory for a moment, Francois, if you want. There you go. There's a big central blue word there, leather. Is that something you would agree with? Yeah. Yeah, you have a, a lot of tertiary notes uh, in, in this one. Um, basically, for the Napoleon, we, 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 we try to have, you know, uh, it's not really a balance between the XO uh, and, and the VSOP. It's more complicated than that. Uh, we try to keep the freshness, of course, uh, to have dynamism uh, on the mouth. Uh, but the most important is to have uh, the very present notes uh, of the aging and, and tertiary notes, uh, because we really want to make the, the, the action on that. Uh, so yeah, uh, le leather for me, uh, I have leather, I have uh, um, cooked, cooked fruits, mm -hmm. baked fruits. Um, There's a very funny one mm -hmm. here. Is uh, somebody has tasted Chewbacca? I don't know who that was, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to say it's Mark. It's probably someone else uh, messing with Mark's head, but um, I don't have a clue what Chewbacca tastes like. So <laughs> that's the problem with these things being anonymous. You don't know who is putting <laughs> these tasting notes in. <laughs> Maybe something uh, I saw in the tasting note that Mark uh, wrote in the chat, the word rancio. Um, could, you, could you tell us a bit more what that exactly is? Because that's a word that often pops up, but... Uh... Um, you know, uh, for me, rancio, it's very, very hard to, to, to describe. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's why I'm asking you and I don't try to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rancho, uh, Rancho for me is uh, like you know uh, I, I I smell it in the in the barrels uh, when you have the old wood. Uh, 
Yeah. It's, um, it's the it's notes of um, I say the um, I want to say oxidation. Yeah, that's that's being mentioned in the chat too. It's a type of oxidation. There's there's this kind of oxidative notes uh, in there. Yeah, it's very hard to describe, as you said. It's uh, yeah, it's one of these words that cannot be um, translated. I think. Yeah, no, I I, I don't really. Uh, in French, we say "rancio." Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mar Mark has uh, put it in the chat here too. Ooh, there's there's lots of text coming in here. I think this that's Wikipedia uh, being copied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's good. That's a good source of uh, of info. So I'm not going to read all of that. But sweet oxidation stuff like that. Yeah, that that's 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 uh, rancio, of course. But yeah, it, it's one of those things that you can only taste, and once you've tasted it, you always remember what it is, but you can't really explain it. So. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very complicated. Yeah, because for, so, for yeah, for some people it's uh, for some people it's a kind of it's a kind of nut, uh, but I, I don't really really agree with that. Uh, mm. no, or very old one. Yeah, and it's very very dry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, would you say that the Napoleon that we tasted is that um, that's like your core range, the one that you present to people to get to know Samalens, or uh... um, for me, Napoleon, it's uh, you know, it's uh, we we try to 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 make um, not a compromise, but uh, Napoleon is very complicated because we we, we want to make. Uh, uh, kind of synthesis of what you can find uh, in the 10 first years of the Armagnac. So yeah, it's interesting when you want to discover it because uh, you have kind of concentration of uh, the freshness, the powerfulness, uh, concentration in the mid palate. Uh, and after the first notes of the very old finish mm -hmm. uh, and long and complex finish. So yeah, it's, I think it, it's interesting to to if it was your 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 question uh, to to introduce the Armagnac by this by the Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe it's a, it's a good idea to compare it to the the vintage one, which has a lot more age. So you yeah. can see what what the what the the evolution <laughs> brings to, uh, to the spirit. Uh, I don't know if that was uh, you were already ready for that, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's I do that. Let's, uh, let's pour the vintage. Beautiful bottle. Is there? Uh, Jean is asking in the chat: uh, Is Napoleon equal to XO? It's uh... Uh, no, no, no. XO, it's um, XO. It's ten years minimum. Okay. Uh, in the blend, so no, it's not the same. And overall, in the way we work it, that's very different. If you want, I have uh, some little bit of data I mm -hmm. can share. So yeah, for this one, we use 100% uh, of uh, traditional distillation. Uh, and so we use mostly uni blanc, so I, I put full blanche, but uh, it's uh, one person, less than one person. For this one, uh, it's a majority of uni blanc. Mm -hmm. And the difference 
between this one and and, and Napoleon, uh, it's also the the aging. So for this one, we use uh, barrels of black Gascony. So black Gascony is uh, it's uh, in Bar Maniac, We call the the Bar Maniac region the, the black Gascony because uh, we have uh, very small oaks uh, in this region, and you have this little forest uh, in the in the terroir, and um, we make we, we make some barrels with it, and it's a very very thin grain. Uh, and for us, it's important because. Uh, when we make a vintage, we don't want to, to shock uh, the eau de vie in the first years uh, with big grain. Uh, and so you have a very, very smooth uh, work of the wood. Uh, and that, but it's very rare because we don't have a lot of this oats now because, uh, you know, uh, it's a very, very small production and you have, you don't have a lot of producers producers sorry uh, so that's why um, it's uh, we have it for the vintages and very special cuvee and we make also the rotation between old and, and, and new barrels but only uh, with the black gascony oats mm. it is very different and uh, people in the in the in the chat are also noticing it. Like, uh, there's some nice rancho in this one. Uh, someone is saying, uh, um, "Yeah." So this is 1996. Yeah. And this was bottled uh, in what year? Do you know that? Uh, so we. It depends on the the, the 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 tasting. So, but this one it was bottled uh, two okay. months ago. Yeah, it's on the it's on the on the on the bottle here. It's this one. The bottle that I sent out was bottled on the fourth of February, uh, twenty one. Yeah. So this year in February. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, we two months before the the, the, the bottling, uh, we begin the the reduction uh, to have the forty two percent, and after we bottle. Okay. But uh, the nineteen ninety six is uh, still inside the barrels for the moment. Mm -hmm. What I've always noticed about uh, Samalens is the, the bottles, the shape of the bottles. It's very yeah. distinctive, very recognizable uh, straight away from a, long, from a long way. So is there a story behind that too, or is that? Uh... Uh, it's a very, very old bottle. And uh, the bottle was, uh, the vintage bottle was reshaped, uh, but this one we really wanted to, to keep it. So we just uh, changed uh, during uh, years and years. Uh, it was, um, you know, uh, um, you have some, you had some uh, uh, grain uh, mm -hmm. on the on the bottle. So now we changed it to to have more modern one, but uh, we kept uh, the shape. Uh, but it's an interesting question. Uh, I don't want to, to say a lot, but uh, you, you have, there is a project for the moment to make something maybe different. <laughs> the next one, you mean? In the future. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. So we, we are working on this model because it's a very, very nice one, very, very old. And... Uh, yeah, I think uh, you will have uh, some some changes in the mm -hmm. future. Evolutions. I prefer evolutions because we, we keep the heritage, but uh, we, we built on it. Oh, yes. Everything should always evolve, of course. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have some tasting notes uh, for the vintage yeah. I'd like to share. So, I'll show you that. Here you go. It's not that much, but I think people are still uh, trying to put it in because there's a lot of there's a lot going on in this uh, in this uh, glass. I think. Yeah. I I really have the the 
orange peel, and that's that's funny because I I don't see it. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, there's more being added as we speak, or as we are uh, looking at it, because I think people are liking it. Orange peel. <laughs> Orange peel, of course. As soon as you say something, you start <laughs> tasting it. So uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's very good. There's some, there's, some, uh, there's some people really getting involved with the tasting notes. That's nice. Wax that's very... is something... Yeah, that's a very, um, it was a very, very complex. Uh, I had some, some story from the Salon Masters, uh, the ancient Salon Masters when I arrived in Samanas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very, a very complicated uh, vintage to, complicated not because it was uh, a bad year, uh, but you know, when you distillate with traditional uh, pot stills in Armagnac, um, so it's not you, you. You don't have you know the the, um, the cut uh, with a certain degree uh, with the tails and the and the uh, and the heads. Uh, so of course you don't have it because it's a continuous flood of wine. So you, if if you have some wine, you distillate um, and. All the work is to adapt permanently the pressure of gas and the pressure of and the flood of wine. Uh, and we have centenary um, pot stills, so it's very interesting. But uh, you know, it's very very capricious. Uh, mm. And when you have some some changes in the atmosphere, the temperature, the hygrometry, the taste change. So when you elaborate an armagnac, it's like, you know, when, when you, if it's really like, if you s speak with your alembic and you, you adjust, you taste, you adjust, you taste, you adjust. And in 1996, it was very, very rich uh, and very, very complicated. And the cellar master said to me, it was very, very difficult to sleep uh, because uh, almost all the 30 minutes I had to adjust. Okay. Wow. And so that's why the 1996 is one of your vintages that are pushed forwards also. Yeah, or... yeah because we really, really, really like it. Okay. Uh, and the, the, it's representative of the very complicated work when you're in front of the tra on the traditional uh, uh, alembic from our uh, spot steel from Armand Act. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult work, and it's it's not only it's it's more than technique. It's uh, it's experience. Okay. And of course, getting to get the feel for the for the specific still or alembic that's in front of you, because they are all different, exactly. of course. Yeah. And when you have different alembic uh, pot stills, you have different uh, aromas. For example, in Sabalans, each year we have. Just one pot still. Each year we have um, strawberries aromas. Okay. And we don't know why, but every time we have this kind of, of flavors when we distillate. And when you enter in the distilleries, well, it's this one. I'm <laughs> sure. They're working on that still today. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. And do you do you notice the same um, aromas in the finished product too? Um, or is it, is it not kept aside? Yeah, like it, it depends. It depends on you know the, the, the kind of aromas because after you have the wood, the, the, the wood treatment, for example, when you distillate um, a baku, uh, so th this year we, we distillated a very very small batch of baku, and when you distill baku, you have strong apple aromas. When you're in the distillery, it's uh, it's very very strong, and after you don't have it in the cask after okay. three or four years. And yeah, yeah it, it really depends. But you so, the, the richness. Yeah. So the, 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 the reaction with the wood takes all takes out takes out those molecules and leaves the other ones in, something like that. Maybe or, or the evaporation. Uh, or changes it, yeah. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Um, I think we should move on to the, the last uh, in the in the row, the last Armagnac we have, which yeah. is the, the eight-year-old. 
the single, uh, the Samalens uh, aged eight years, which is a completely different bottle. Yeah. So the story uh, before this product, I would just share a little presentation. Uh, it was to make something, it's, you know, the beginning of the innovation in the Samalens house. Uh, and that's why when we when we took the heritage of, of the house, we took this brand to make some flavors experiences uh, around the Armagnac product. Uh, because Pierre Samalens, uh, who was the ancient uh, cellar master and the last from the Samalens family to make some Armagnac in the house, uh, had the idea to make something um, he was thinking about a whiskey, but uh, he didn't want to make it. And he had the idea because it's dilated a lot. Uh, he found some common aromas between uh, some whiskeys and Armagnac. Uh, overall, because of the, the aromatic concentration that you have on the mid palate, palate and the structure of the elderly. So decided to make something completely different. And that's why it's a different shape of bottle because you really wanted to have uh, a, a whiskey state of mind for an Armagnac. And uh, he created the single by Samalas. So again, uh, in honor of uh, the, the single, uh, single malt. And the idea was to use only one grape uh, to make something uh, with more common uh, features uh, with uh, uh, the, the whiskey. So a little bit more dry, more dyna dynamic, and um, something drinkable on the rocks. And the, he created the single of Savannah with 80% of traditional distillation and 20% of double. So the aging is basically in oak barrels, not black Gascony, but French oak barrels. Uh, and it's 95% of new barrels to have uh, strong woody notes and have a, a, a real dynamism uh, uh, in the woody aromas and the, the wood treatment. Just, just, to, just to make it clear to everyone, we do have the eight-year-old uh, in our glasses, so you, you all got the, a sample of the eight-year-old. But there's a twelve-year-old is on the on the screen. But uh... oh yeah, sorry, I made a sorry. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sorry. I, I because we have the eight, the twelve, uh, and the fifteen. Uh, yeah, I, I I put the fifteen. So sorry. <laughs> No problem. Uh, it, as 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 uh, as long as everybody knows, we all have the same thing in our glasses. Uh, that's the most important thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. So uh, and we he made a range. So the eight years old, uh, the eight years old minimum, the twelve and the fifty. And so the interesting thing is. So of course you have a, a little bit more dry and dynamic uh, of all in the mid palate. Uh, me, I have a, a strong mid palate with our, with a uh, So Francois, the, the the French oak barrels that you used uh, are they all uh, new oak barrels, or did they contain other spirits or drinks before that? No, it's a uh, new oak barrels, and we use uh, ninety-five percent of new barrels. Okay. We have five percent if we need to have some smooth woody notes, but it's ninety-five percent. Okay. And and uh, when did you start uh, creating this uh, or putting this into the market? The single, the Samalins. Single Samalens uh, was uh, the beginning of two thousand. It's it was approximately two thousand two. Okay. It is. Uh, I mean, if you would uh, offer this uh, blind in a in a lineup, 
uh, in with whiskies, I mean, you, you wouldn't, it, it, it compares. I mean, you would fool people with this, I think. Uh, maybe I think, uh, but I think some, some people will recognize the taste. Of course. Uh, but I think it's more complicated on ice. Yeah. Uh, I, I think on the rocks, uh, you can, it's much more difficult to, to recognize it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should uh, show the tasting notes that people are uh, offering up and start talking a little bit about those because there's more and more coming in now. Somebody has smoke. I don't have any smoke, but I can... Uh, some oak, dried fruits, apples. On the mid palate, I have... Um... Uh, I totally forgot the, the, the word in English, but it's a release. Yeah, a licorice. Yeah, licorice. The funny thing is, I see that 10 people have put in tasting notes. Uh, and with all the, the, the previous ones, it was always about 10 to 15 people, but we had much, many more words uh, here. This, it's, it's a bit more complicated, I think, to, to really put some tasting notes uh, on this. Um, I don't know if everybody agrees, but uh, I, I think we can see that from, uh, from what's appearing on the screen. That's interesting because it's um, we, we really and, and I'm sure uh, it, it was the, the Pierre Samanon's uh, volunteer to, to make something very, very different. And when people are surprised, um, for us, uh, the, the, the goal is reached. Mm -hmm. well, it is very different from the two other ones that we yes. Yeah. I mean, that's very clear if you... That's why it's interesting to, to put it at the end uh, because it's a completely different one. Mm. So it's not an it's not an XO, it's not it's it's not a Napoleon, it's it's really you have much more tension. Yeah. Yeah, but when when uh, we uh, did a meeting last week to prepare and you you uh, for the lineup you said you would put this in the last place after the vintage. I was like, okay, something that's a lot younger after the vintage. That's interesting. And I was very curious to see what it's, how it would work out. But I, I understand now why, why you do it, because it's so different from, uh, from the other thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't want to, you know, to, to, to put the 1996 uh, more smooth, uh, more complex after a very dynamic one, mm -hmm. uh, to, to not have, you know, um, too much powerfulness before smooth, uh, smooth one. Yeah. Again, there's a funny tasting note. Wannabe or contortion. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that was Mark again or it was some. This one wasn't Mark, but this is one. This is someone messing with Mark's head. Uh, <laughs> very funny. Very funny. All right. I agree with pepper. I really have pepper. Yeah, yeah, I do too. And the apples I see too. There's there's some some different versions of apple. Uh, cuivre. Yeah. I don't uh, cuivre. It's interesting. I don't uh, have. I don't okay. know how copper tastes, but yeah, no, I don't eat a lot of copper. But all right, I think we should. Um... Start moving on to the end of the tasting because uh, we've already spent over uh, an hour and a half. Um, we could spend hours more with these drinks, I'm sure, but uh, uh, let's—it's a Monday night, so let's not make it too late for everybody. Um, I'm going to uh, stop sharing that. Um, the next thing you'll see in your Mentimeter is um, an opportunity to give a score. Uh, for each of the drinks that you that you tasted, 
uh, and this way we can make an average of all of it and then we can uh, show you what you as a group uh, preferred uh, for today. It's not really um, a score in a, in a school kind of way. It's more, uh, as you can see on the, on the image, to the left is this is less to my taste and to the right is this is a clear winner for me. I like this very much. So it's not really a competition, uh, as I would say. It's more of a, just an, uh, another different way of, of um, seeing what you thought of the, of the spirits that we tasted. Um, I'll bring back uh, Manon and Frédéric too. Um, so we're all in view uh, again while we're waiting for the for the for the for the scores of the Belgian jury. Um, are there any more? If there is not any more questions, this is the moment. I think this is the time to uh, ask questions. Uh, I didn't uh, specifically ask for questions about the Armagnac for Francois. So if that's uh, the case, this is your moment. Um, please go ahead. Uh, and otherwise, um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll start asking. Uh, our esteemed guests, if they have any final words to part with, uh, to, to share with our, uh, our our participants. Maybe we should start with uh, Manon and Frédéric because they have been uh, waiting uh, now. So is, is there anything you would uh, like to add to what you said to, to our Belgian uh, participants? No, that's always a pleasure. And uh, it's so rare to have some uh, uh, exchange with the, our friend from Armania. So thank you very much. And also I would like to, to add, you are welcome in our, uh, in our company anytime you want. And uh, really we will, uh, we will welcome you to, to put you in uh, the best, with the best spirit in the world. I'm sorry, I have to tell you. <laughs> so you thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you have, you have, a, you have a, uh, like a visitor center uh, in- uh, Yes, in absolutely, we have a visitor center okay. and uh, you are all welcome, of course. Uh, so. you, you need also to, to tell us someday before and we will, uh, we will do the maximum to welcome you, yes. Perfect. Francois, is there anything you would like to add uh, um, on a, as a final note? Yeah, but thank you uh, very much for all, uh, for especially for all your your, your questions. Uh, it's always interesting to have some reflections from from overall from professionals because uh, for us it's you know it's also a, a, a way to to ask the, the good question and be more more rich and have all your impressions. So and. Again, uh, as uh, Frédéric and Manon said, uh, you're welcome in Armagnac too. Uh, so we can, we have a lot of visitors each year and if you want to discover it, uh, you're welcome and it will be a pleasure to, to welcome you. Okay, perfect, very nice. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll certainly be looking at next summer to see if we can go to France and uh, your, your both, uh, both your regions because uh, that sounds good. Uh, there's one question, uh, Francois, for you. Uh, yeah. Willem asked, I have worked a lot in the years, uh, the, the 90s and the, and the nillies, as they say. Is it correct that the Armagnacs got lighter nowadays than, the, than they were back then? Oh, that's a good question. If it's lighter? Mm -hmm. um, if it's lighter, I, I don't know. Uh, it, de it depends on the terroir. Uh, of course, if you compare with Tenares, it's much more, you have much, much more powerfulness uh, in the Armagnac Tenares. Uh, I think I, I didn't see, uh, uh, in my opinion, I didn't see a real uh, evolution in terms of powerfulness concerning the, the Armagnac. Uh, in Bar Armagnac, we, uh, we, we have a very smooth and delicate eau de vie. That's why we work only this terroir. Uh, but but maybe maybe if we make a, a, a vertical tasting, uh, we'll see a real difference. Uh, it's interesting. I take notes. Okay. Nice, good a good idea for the next one. Um, I will share with you the votes of the Belgian jury now, so you can have a little idea of what uh, people have experienced tonight. Uh, you can see it there in front of you. It's all pretty much in the same vein. The port is uh, is uh, one of the favorites, I think, uh, of everything that we've tasted uh, this tonight. And you can see the waves also. So there's lots of different opinions. Uh, people scoring from uh, from uh, 
two to ten, basically. So lots of differences uh, between the between how people uh, have. Uh, experienced these spirits, which is always nice to see. Um, for the people, uh, I see that uh, Mark has uh, already uh, written a blog on his website. Uh, the link is in the chat uh, about this this evening. So uh, if you want to read about his tasting notes, go to that blog. It's always interesting to read, always a pleasure. So thank you, Mark, for that. Um, I think everybody, uh, there's no more questions I see. So I think we can... Uh, move on to the the sad end of the tasting. Uh, so um, from my part, Francois, uh, Manon, Frédéric, a big thank you to be here to talk to us about this, yeah. to ask, to ask, uh, to answer our questions uh, and to, of course, provide us with these nice spirits, because that's a, that's a good, a good thing. So uh, I have enjoyed this a lot, too. I've learned a lot, which is always the case with these tastings. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Sinoko, thank you for organizing this and uh, and keep uh, to to, uh, to keep on organizing these things. So um, I hope uh, there will be uh, there will be more of these to come in the future. Uh, and of course, as a final note of thanks, all of you who have participated for your interaction, for your enthusiasm and for being here because uh, it would be a lot different if uh, there was nobody participating. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, hope to see you next time. If this, uh, I, I will keep in touch with you all uh, via mail uh, to send you all the links, et cetera, for uh, what, you, what, you, what you need about this. Um, and if you want to order one of these, bo these bottles, uh, you know the way to Sinoco, so uh, you'll find the way. Thank you all and see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.